Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Mesh Mixer to separate, manipulate, and then combine all the shells that make up a model. Alright, let's get to it. As for the model that I'll be using, it's one of the many different combinations you can make using the mini customizer from the Printing Goes Ever On. If you guys don't know yet, it's a really cool collection of weapons, armor, poses, and even some different mounts that you can use to create custom miniatures. Now, as you can see, sometimes some of those pieces will collide with each other in a way that doesn't quite look right. So I'm going to show you how you can pull those pieces apart, move them around, and make them look better whenever those collisions happen. Now, if you don't already have Mesh Mixer, I definitely recommend you grab it because it's a really useful program. So with Mesh Mixer open, you're going to drag and drop your file. And once the file opens, you can see that we've got it in here, but it's way above the build plate. So you want to go over to edit and then go to align to drop it down onto the build plate just to make sure it's where we need it to be. So that way, whenever we export it, it's going to be sitting on your build plate in your slicer. Now from here, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to click on separate shells. And now you can see that Mesh Mixer has gone through and broken the model up into different shells. Now, if you don't know what it means when a model has different shells, essentially it's just saying that the model is made up of a bunch of different parts instead of being one solid piece. That's all. And then in the browser here, you can click down through this list and look at all the different parts that Mesh Mixer broke the model into. And then most likely, as you go down through the list, there's going to be a couple that don't get highlighted because they're internal. Obviously, you don't have to worry about those. And then, of course, your other option is to minimize the object browser and then click on the model itself to find the different parts. So we said before that this quiver was actually interacting with the cape, as you can see. So we're actually going to move this around so it looks a little better. So once you have a model separated into parts, it's really easy to move those parts around. Just highlight the piece you want to move, go to Edit, and then go to Transform. From there, you'll have a couple of different options. You can use the arrows to move the part up and down, left and right, in and out, that kind of thing. Or you can use these arches here to actually change the pitch. Now one thing to note, if these snap points are too far apart or if they're too close together, if you want to have more or less precision, you can hit the up or down arrows to change the distance between the snap points. And now from here, I'm going to see if I can find a position for this quiver where it's going to look good, but it's not going to obscure any detail. And in order to do that, what you want to do is move it a little bit and kind of move around the model and see where you're at and make sure that you're not like, for example, obscuring the detail of this pouch here. And real quick, in order to move, I'm just holding down the right mouse button. That allows me to spin this around. Or you can use the mouse wheel to go in and out. So my instinct is telling me that I'm probably going to have to move this down a bit in order to get it into a position where it's going to look good but not interact with anything in a negative way. So that looks almost perfect, but there's still a little bit of a cutout back here from where it was supposed to be in its original position in order to fit into a, a part or a piece. So I'm going to move this down a little bit more and then probably move it just like that a little. Turn it just a little bit more. Uh, actually, right there looks all right. So all I'm doing is moving it in small increments, trying to find a spot where it's not going to do exactly that, where it's actually interacting with the other model next to it. That looks okay, but we can still see a little bit of that opening there. So that's pretty low on his back but we might still be able to make that work. And if you go down too far, you will obscure everything by going down below the build plate. So I'm going to roll that just a little bit more and go back up again. So like I said, all I'm trying to do is to find a position that looks good that looks natural, a place where somebody would actually wear this quiver, and also isn't interacting with the stuff around it. And that looks pretty good to me. Honestly, most people aren't going to really look at the model that closely to see that there's a cutout back there, but if it's really bothering you, you can play with this as much as you want to try to find a perfect position. I'm pretty good with that, pretty happy with it. Yeah, that's actually a little bit better right there, just a little bit. And anytime, if you put it in a place you don't want it to be, or if you went too far with something, just hit Control-Z and move it back out a little bit. So I'm going to put it right back in just a little bit, but not quite so far. And that actually looks pretty good to me. I really like that. So now you can see we haven't obscured the detail of this pouch here, and we haven't interacted with uh, the hilt of the sword here either. So it's still interacting with the back of his plates here, plate mail, but I think that actually looks a little bit better. It doesn't interact in a way that looks really noticeable. I think it just looks better all around. 
But if you really decide at the end that you can't get this to work, you're just not happy with it, you can always delete it. But once you have it in a position you like, you're going to hit accept. And then from here, go up to the object browser again under view object browser, select the top part, hold shift and hit the bottom. And now it will select all pieces in the object browser and you can hit combine. And now it's put all those pieces back together into one model. So one more thing I want to touch on real quick. You can see these little red dots here. These are areas that Mesh Mixer is saying it's found a problem with the model. I always take that with a grain of salt, and I recommend that you guys do too, because Mesh Mixer can tend to be a little sensitive about stuff like that. So most likely these are going to print with no issues at all. But if you bring it into your slicer and you see that there's a problem, then you can bring it back in here and try to repair it or use something like the NetFab tool. But don't freak out if you bring a model in and it has errors like this or errors that Mesh Mixer is identifying, because most likely it's not going to be that big a deal. But if you see them, I just wanted you to know what they were. So from here, you're going to go up to File, then you're going to go to Export, and then you're going to give it some name, whatever speaks to you. Then make sure that you have STL selected as your file type. And I always save the desktop just because I think it makes it easy to find and organize. But obviously you guys can do whatever you want. Then you're going to hit save. And most likely it's going to tell you that there's an error. I wouldn't worry about it. Again, like I said, it's most likely identifying these little areas that it thinks are a problem. So I'm just going to hit continue. If you want to check out the mini customizer I mentioned at the beginning of the video and get access to battle maps and stat blocks and all kinds of other really cool extras, definitely check out The Printing Goes Ever On. You'll find a link for them in the description down below. All right, so that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, you can find my Patreon information down below. All right, let's go print something.